Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are going to delve into what is coming to automation with the next updates. This is all going to be compacted into a not so little dev update and it is going to be one of those fancy uh, big, big outlook videos. And to start things off, let's start out with the big picture. Of course, what is coming next is what you know as LCV 4.3. We have now shifted towards calling them by proper names. So this is overarchingly called the Supercharger update because it does include superchargers, which you have been waiting for for just, just a few little years. As you can see on screen here, this update is comprised of three sub-updates. And why three updates within one big one, Kerob? Why, why is that? Well, did, were you along for 4.2? Did you notice how long that took? Yeah, that, that's why. We're splitting it up into um, smaller, more manageable chunks. The Ellisbury update is basically a little bit of a continuation of the engine designer revamp, but also has a kind of car designer revamp in it with the most requested things being uh, fl more fleshed out and updated. Update number two is Al Rilma. Uh, also, of course, these are place names in the automation light campaign universe. Um, that one then is another uh, ver very charged update and there it is containing superchargers finally and uh, sequential turbochargers as well which had been uh, skipped from 4.2 because it was taking way too long already also we're going to see uh, much anticipated uh, especially on my end um return of multiplier yes scenario based multiplayer that will be and it will also include a standalone track editor and then finally we have update number three Terso, that's the capital of Fruinia, of course, with full multiplayer. And what that means remains to be seen, or rather, not, not see, seen by you. We know quite well what's supposed to be in it. But we are not quite sure how, to what extent we can um, pull off all those plans for the multiplayer mode, which is why we keep it a little vague here. It's very deliberate. So um, stay with us until probably update one is complete, because while we are working on update one, we are also in the background figuring out a lot of stuff for update two and three. And now you would be saying, but Ark, this has taken three months already. Three and a half months, you could say. And uh, where are you at right now? Well, we are more than 50% done with the Ellisbury update. Um, and it's looking pretty good so far. We have some back-end stuff already prepared for update two and three as well. It is taking a long time, but there are very significant changes. And what we're going to do now is to take a more in-depth look at what is coming in the next update, the Ellisbury update, that is contained within the Supercharger update. And um, before we do that, let me talk about even grander picture here. Our plans for the game are as such that with the uh, 4.3, with the Supercharger update, we are going to consider the engine designer and the car designer feature complete. And from then on, we're going to mostly focus on just adding some content. It's not new features, but pure content like um, car bodies, fixtures, photo scenes, and all that good miscellaneous stuff. Automation, the core game, the designers, at that point will be complete. Without the campaign even being played, it is a, a finished game that is playable and enjoyable. Um, it, to many people it is already with the sandbox mode, but there is not really a game there unless you play the tycoon part. So now, let us focus in on the Ellisbury update. And there is a lot of good stuff in there. Um, and wh why not go through and show you? Because a lot of it is at least partially already implemented. So uh, let's uh, take, a, take a tour through the car designer and engine designer and see what's new and what is coming and why and how it's going to fit together. This will probably take a little while, but let's get into that. Well, the very first thing that you see here already is that there's a test company work in progress. That is a UI which lets you sort your sandbox cars uh, into companies. 
And they also do have, um, well, you can transfer cars between companies. And we have full tech pool that can be assigned for each decade, which you then also have available in Sandbox. And you can play or oh, role play your Sandbox company in that way. And this would e be even better if there was a P in there somewhere. But, um, oh, that actually didn't save. Well, now we found a bug. Excellent. So now let's jump into the car designer as promised. And uh, there it is. Uh, and see what's going on there. What you got to keep in mind with everything that I'm showing here, of course, as you already have seen, is that this is a developer build only and as such extremely buggy, unfinished, unpolished and uh, pretty crap. So uh, let's head over to the family of the engine and you already see a lot of different things here in the block material list. We have completely revised the engine blocks. No longer is it just the material that you select, but also you do select what kind of construction you have and what deck type the engine design is. With that, you get a lot of choice there, really, and it's meaningful choice too. Cast iron, of course, super inexpensive, but um, also very sturdy. And that sturdiness is going to affect your reliability ratings. And you did see some kind of line there that was popping in this this little dashed line here uh, it currently doesn't have a description right there but it is the uh, a new concept that we call maximum power density like you can put a lot of power um, output through a cast iron block and it won't bother but if you do so with an open deck constructed Alzi super lightweight construction Alzi head um, block engine block then yeah, you will get some bending and with it a uh, certain death. So that, that is something that is now part of automation. And that is also where deck type comes in. We have lightweight designs, that is open deck type. And we do have um, heavy designs, which are closed decks. Of course, the closed deck variants can take a lot more power before they falter. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of nuance in this new system, which I really like, and I think you'll be um, you'll be liking this system as well. If you want to build something crazy, then you will probably have to go for the pure aluminium CNC'd billet, and that can take a lot of punishment. But anyway, let's move on here. Um, this is something to keep in mind. 106, 106. Let's go over here. That is a new setting, isn't it? Yes, you can now variant up bore your engine. And those um, closed deck types, you can usually up bore quite a bit more than the others. Four millimeters there, that seems to be uh, around ish where, where you end up in reality um, as a maximum. And f you can also, from the starting point, go down by about 15%. So, what's the compromise here? Well, it's pretty simple, really. If you make your uh, cylinder walls really thin because you have, have it upboard like crazy, it is going to be better at cooling because there's less material between the cooling stuff and um, the, the fire in the engine. But on the other hand, you will have less reliability and a lower uh, power density limit. And the opposite, of course, is true down here. So as you downbore and make the engine more sturdy, so this is actually playing, or supposed to be playing like, that um, some heavy-duty engines you build for your utility vehicles will actually be a little bit on the downboard side. You make a slightly bigger block, make it like cast iron and really sturdy, and when you go down here and just, just make it a little thicker all around and less stressed, you will gain a few points of reliability, which of course will be much appreciated by your customers, at least the utility customers. But then hold up, Kero, what, what is going on here? This, this is, this is crazy. Yes, yes, there's a lot of new stuff in the bottom end tab as well. Basically a full revamp of these components and there's more to it than just more components as well, more design choices. So first of all, they are more fleshed out. Um, 
cast cranks in modern times aren't really a thing anymore. Uh, it's mostly gone to towards forged because they don't hold up too well. And uh, then we have a new billet option as well, or split them up into two. Billet steel for mega high revving engines and billet steel heavy for um, something that is a bit higher turbocharged or supercharged. The most interesting aspect of all these new components though is that they finally interact in a, a way that is more realistic. So the system that I'm now going to talk about is not implemented yet, but it is done. As in, we have the calculations and it's very simple to implement actually. Um, it works something like this. The crank sees the weight of the conrods plus the weight of the pistons and takes that as a stressor for its RPM performance or RPM limit. The conrods see the weight of the pistons as a limiting factor to their RPM limit. And the pistons just live on their own in terms of RPM stress. So what happens now is that if you choose a heavy piston, the RPM limits of conrods and crank are lowered compared to when you choose a light piston. The same is true for conrods affecting the cranks. So what ends up happening is that you need to upgrade different components in here depending on what you want to do. Do you want to have a little bit more torque? Then you need to consider going for a heavier choice on um, the component that is lacking the torque limit but that would lower the RPM limit of both the crank and the conrod at that point. So you going for a heavier piston can mean that you also need to change your conrods and crank, just like in real life. Overall, I think this will make this tab of design choices a lot more important and nuanced and much more realistic also, because previously it was really just fixed stats and the pistons didn't affect anything what was holding them together <laughs> or holding them in place, which is just wrong. One thing that I also, sh also should mention is uh, that you, and you see it down here in the tooltip, it does state a power limit. So the pistons as well as the engine block are the two components that you, um, that you choose that have a certain power limit or power density limit. And some of you might be a little scared seeing that because the only thing that you ever build is drag cars for BeamNG with 10,000 plus horsepower. And uh, do, do not fret because we thought about you. These power limits are soft limits and they do lower reliability slowly and smoothly when you go beyond the limit. You will not see that your power density completely kills a car and doesn't let it run. So that means you can still make those insane um, engines but uh, and cars, but probably not for a uh, actual demographic that would buy them or want to buy them because they will be horribly uh, reliable. Uh, and with that, I mean not reliable at all. Another thing that we are going to implement is a complete revamp of the emissions system because the old one is just like magic numbers being thrown together by a few factors that are a little bit too far removed from anything real. And with the completed uh, engine designer revamp, with all this new data that we do have, and uh, lots of under the hood data as well about combustion temperatures and so on, what we can make is a much enhanced emission system that is giving you somewhat realistic values for the actual types of emissions that you would see. Most likely the system will end up tracking three different uh, emissions and that is carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, uh, that's basically unburned fuel there, as well as of course NOx. Together we will probably uh, output them as some kind of mashed up value once again 
that represents emissions, but a tooltip would reveal the individual components of that. And um, also what we can do now is to make them work much more realistically with the catalytic converters. And the ignition timing slider will be expanded in functionality to also have uh, retarded timing to lower emissions because that is definitely a thing. That is why the cars in the 70s were so absolutely atrocious because they had to pull immense amounts of timing to um, make the emission limits. And that is something that could be a thing in campaign, at least in some countries. And with that, we are done with the engine designer changes that are planned for now. And we are moving right into the car designer and the very first tab that actually matters yeah, it's not this one. Uh, the drivetrain. Whoa, camera, what is this? This is too, too much to take. Yes, so we are going to make a complete overhaul of the uh, drivetrain tab and its functionality. And you can already see it in action right there. Um, continuous, yes, you read that right. The uh, CVTs are going to uh, be implemented. And that is because we are going to implement a gearbox torque limit. And that is a very, very realistic problem to have. Uh, you can't just put in infinite amounts of torque into your gearbox and expect it to last or um, not explode. Also, what you probably have noticed playing automation is that the gearing setup with its two sliders of top gear and spread was uh, somewhat lackluster. So if you excuse the scaling of the graph here, let me show you what the new system does. We have one additional slider, which is the first gear slider, and you can change that freely. So um, let's, let's do exactly that. And um, now with the spread slider and top gear slider, or well, top speed slider, gearing top speed that is, you can now slide with a spread slider in between those values and just place your gears the way you want and down here you see the speed in kilometers or the actual gear ratios with this changeover in system it becomes a lot more feasible to have this we do have well it's a scroll list don't don't expect beautiful everything fits your eye for you nerds that is that's not going to be a thing but you can now individually tune your gears and um, that will override as you can see there I was just moving first gear there that will override some individual gear settings so why do we put this in now well like I said because it's now easy to do so with that required revamp of these that is coming anyway also an argument for revamping this in the first place is that we now have the fuel efficiency map and that you now can uh, really target what you want to do with every gear. Usually those um, 10 speeds that you that you are getting with, well, not sequential, but um, where do we have them? Probably here, yes. Uh, 10 speeds, very often they use seven speeds out of those 10 for just normal spread for your gears that, that you have, that you would need, because who needs more than seven gears, right? But then the additional gears are used for very specific cruising conditions. Like um, they would be setting them for depending on the cruise speed that is uh, common in the country. And that you can now do with your fuel efficiency map here too. I, I don't know if it will be super useful. It's certainly not something that everyone has to do in order to super min-max your car. It's not really required. But the option is there. And for you who uh, like to have full control, well, that's it. But are we done here? The answer is a big fat no, because one of the biggest changes is not the gearing setup, is not continuous variable transmissions, is not the addition of actual race trans transmissions, which are sequential, the return of sequential. Everyone thought that auto manuals were sequential, but they're not. They're just automated manuals. Um, they were called sequential wrongly before. But uh, now we have proper sequentials. Terrible, terrible comfort, but um, nice sportiness and not really viable 
uh, at, at least for normal demographics. Maybe the track demographic likes them. But no, the biggest change in here, oh, and by the way, let me switch to over to CVT. That is already working. Let's take a look at our engine. So um, yeah, it's a pretty sporty one and it falls off right there towards the end. So it's climbing through there until it hits peak power and then just stays at peak power until the, um, the speed ratio here runs out and you have to climb further in RPM as well, that was peak uh, peak power RPM here. And then you just drop off towards the end because you can't sustain that and need to do rev high in order to actually have that speed on the road. So these are working nicely already. And uh, of course, that will be quite fun on the track to, to, hear, to hear those CVTs driving around there. But uh, these will suffer from really low uh, maximum torque numbers and they will be... Um, they will have an additional torque limit applied to them, which is a fixed number. They're, I think the most sturdy CVTs currently in existence are for like 400 newton meters of torque. And I, it doesn't seem like they're scaling like the other gearboxes. But that was another tangent because I still haven't talked about the biggest change here. The biggest change will be the drive types. They're not put in yet. I uh, I, I should have, like last week. But um, that's they are designed and the calculations are worked out. We are going to get a lot more all-wheel drive systems. Different ones with diffs that actually make a difference. <laughs> yes. Um, differentials are going to be uh, revamped completely as part of that. And choosing an open diff will have open diff type of driving behavior. That means that on the track, on the test track, uh, and in background calculations that will be done uh, here in game, you will see diff choice matter in a realistic fashion. For instance, the open diff, uh, well, if one wheel, let, let's just talk about a pair of wheels, right? If one wheel of the pair of wheels that is on a driven axle, has no grip, then the other one will have no torque applied through it. No wheel torque. So um, basically, it's a standstill at that point. You, if one wheel is on a patch of ice, you can't get away anymore because the one wheel spins, the other one has no torque applied to it. Geared LSDs will be... Um, uh, yeah, they are basically torsen. Torsen type LSDs and uh, they will be just having a different torque bias ratio than some of the others like Viscous has around 2, uh, Geared LSD has around 3.5 and also quality dependent and so on and then Electric does is a clutch type which is electronically uh, controlled as well. The clutch type is uh, slightly different to the others in that it does engage an actual clutch and even if there is um, no grip available it still can put through some power if it wants to by just locking the, the clutch plates and beyond that beyond this locking it also does have torque bias ratio which applies torque so what is torque bias ratio just a quick explanation would be take again that pair of wheels on a driven axle and uh, one has 10 newton meters of grip and the other one has 100 me newton meters of grip. All right, so how much torque can we then apply to the wheel that has all the grip? The answer is the lower one, the lower number one, so the 10, times the torque bias ratio, which um, for, for the torsen would be, for instance, 3.5 or 4. So we would be able to put through 40 newton meters onto the uh, wheel with grip and just 10 on the other one. That is a lot more than what you can put through with open. So um, massive revamp of drive types and these will basically give you the choice of your center diff. That is really all there is to it. What kind of drive type uh, do you want? And we are also going to be um, providing full-time and part-time all-wheel drive systems there. Next tab, more awesome. Let's uh, take a look, like virtually imaginary 
because there are no tire types here. What we're going to do is add racing tires to this list because they are highly requested and there's no skin off our nose for, for adding them really. Um, because it's just two new categories, cross-ply race and cross-ply uh, no, <laughs> cross <play> radial. <laughs> that's, that's a new one, Kiram. <laughs> That's a new one. No, uh, what I meant is race radial. So, race cross ply and race radial. And the tire choices then are going to be just by softness and application. So, everything from rally uh, to super softs and drag tires um, to hard compound tires for racing to intermediates and wet tires. And uh, yeah. That, that will probably be quite nice to have um, and maybe become uh, important later on in later updates in this cycle. Wink, wink, not nudge, nudge, but uh, we shall see. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in the same vein, you have something here. We had one more space in the interior list, didn't we? Look what's at the bottom. Yes, you see it right, it's the roll cage. And it's absolutely atrocious for everything that is normal road driving. Because you strip out the interior, put in a roll cage, no comfort. But it sure is good for uh, race cars. And then one final thing is there was some more space in here and we decided to make use of it. What is the most important stats that you can't tweak right now in the suspension tuning? The answer was toe. Yes, and that is quite important for car stability, of course, and um, how much rubber you leave behind you in a long trail. You also see that there is a new tab on here. It's the statistics tab. Yeah, it has basically all the stuff that was here before, except for the test track, which now is over here. And what we are going to do is, this is extremely <laughs> preliminary, not designed at all at the moment. What we're going to do is switching to a full screen track view with floating UI instead, so that you have uh, much more visibility of what's going on. We are going to be using 8K textures. So a track will be an 8K texture that is 8192 times the same thing again uh, in size which will allow us to zoom in onto where your car is at the moment and just deliver a lot more detail and more dynamic feel as your car is driving around uh, the nice little 2d test track and for that purpose we are also going to supply you with a new test track and that is also uh, the namesake of this first update which we are currently going through here you have the draft of oh, a very much work in progress version of the Ellisbury Tri-Oval. And um, that one does not have just one track, but it comes with four different layouts. The main oval of course is ridiculously fast with the, I believe it was 18 degrees banking on the lower two curves and 32 degrees banking on the top curve. Uh, they call it the, the wall of Ellisbury. And uh, yeah, this is going to provide a lot of different flows for, uh, for racing with very fast tracks, with slower ones, just a pure oval and a junior race track on top of that. There are two more items that I just briefly want to mention. And the first one is a car sheet exporter. What that means is basically a poster of your car or rather several pictures of your car with orthogonal taken pictures from side, front, rear, um, and then a beauty shot and a shot of the engine with all kinds of stats. And it would be uh, likely either choosing for you choosing different layouts for this poster or um, choosing what stats to put where and how to order pictures, depending on how we finally implement it. But um, that is also already partially working, at least and as a prototype. And I think this will be great for sharing and for running community uh, events like um, small competitions and so on. 
And so far you have basically heard nothing about campaign. Of course all these changes will affect campaign play greatly as well. With all these new choices and stuff to research and uh, familiarity gains and spread across these new technologies and everything, right? But there is one thing in the game that consistently is underestimated uh, by players of the campaign for very good reason. It is the black box that is our sales model. And I'm pretty sure at this point that if only people understood the brilliance, the utter brilliance of our sales model, everyone would love it on, well, most, most people would. Um, and that's just a shame, really. <laughs> so what we're going to do is to add into campaign something very important breaking the black box and putting it in a so-called sand key chart the flow of customer acquisition from a demographic all the way down to the sales into your trims and also you will be able to see there to give it uh, more context how that a certain demographic chooses to um, select different companies, competitor companies, instead of yours. Ultimately, that will lead to, in future updates, of course, seeing the competition and actually being able to go into the lineup of your competition and seeing which cars are really powerful in there and taking all your market share. Um, that aside, and that's a uh, bigger, trickier project because visualization of so much data in a nice fashion is always really tricky. But um, what we are going to also do, which is far less tricky, is to finally allow uh, companies, AI companies that is, to properly use tech pool and quality and ramp that up over the course of the campaign. I have, I think I've identified that as one of the contributing factors as to why the start of the campaign is always really tough while the end not so much because you have you've accumulated tech pool there but the opposition just doesn't use it <laughs> so even if they had any they they wouldn't be able to make use of it and thus your cars are really way beyond the um, competition at that point so we're going to change that and make it quite a bit more challenging towards the later portions of the game or at least keep a more reasonable um, challenge throughout a campaign. So now I think we have actually hit on all the bigger things that are going to make it into the Ellisbury update one for the final rush towards completing the core of the game. Of course there will be hundreds of little additions and minor features that are not being named here which you likely are going to notice here and there but just will make the game feel more complete and more polished and um, yes so now of course your your biggest question will be when well, that's a really good question because we, we can't really say just yet but uh, as you have seen already in this video many of the things that we uh, want to do here are at least partially done I, I think this covers us for now and uh, there of course will be tons of questions especially about what multiplayer is and so on but we are going to go and get into that in due time. Alright, I hope you enjoyed and I shall see you guys next time. <laughs>